you for being here. What a thrill. I've got to say, these... As I, as I look towards now, like, you know, the, the end, when I was wrapping up this show, these are... I promise you, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, these are the moments I'll miss where I get to sit now for a bit of time talking to people I have nothing but love and respect and admiration for, and I'm so grateful that you're here now. Tell me, your paths must have crossed. Have you, have you met before? Both of you, have you spent yeah. much time together? Yes. We have. We have passed before. Guillermo came to me many years ago with a wonderful project. I got all excited about it. And I said, but then you're going to direct, right? He said, no. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, well, Guillermo, if you, know, if you want to direct it. So, fantastic up in the yes, field, so huh? Thank you, what yeah. a beautiful, beautiful job. I mean, thank really, you. If you haven't seen it, go see it. What really, was really the... Great. What, can you remember what the project was, Kiemo? Uh, it was two projects. One he was doing about a heist, about a thief, a jewel thief, and the other one was called uh, Riding Shotgun. Oh. And it was about a, a guy doing a one last ride on a limo full of marijuana. What's <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> something, something. It Could was like been. a crime film, yes. Okay. And what's happened to those projects? Are you going to ever make oh, them? Oh, you know, I, I, I've done 12 movies. I've written or co-written 33 screenplays. So that means there are 22 in the top drawer. Huh? Yeah. And, they, and they never happen, you know? It's, I call Hollywood the land of the slow no. Right. Go on, what do you mean? Everybody, everybody you meet in Hollywood is about to start a project. Right. And they're, they're really close, they just need, you know, and it never happens. Right. So the natural state of a film is not to happen. And then only by being stubborn and crazy. Like Pinocchio took, uh, I started talking about doing Pinocchio formally, this version, around 2004. Stop. Yeah, and we were no. fully rejected uh, by around 2009, everybody had passed. Wow. Yeah. Twice, by the way. <laughs> now, I want to talk to you about this, Michael Douglas, this photo I saw of you. Uh, I want to talk about this hair. Now... <laughs> What are we? What are we? What is this? I mean, look, we all we all we all went through something in lockdown. Is that what this is? <laughs> what happened? No, that was. Uh, I'm, I'm just finished up. I'm playing Ben Franklin. Mm. Oh, and, the uh, Apple series. The Apple yes. series, Ben Franklin, and I was. In, this is in in Paris. I was actually at a uh, basketball game in Paris, <laughs> with, who's going to be the number one? I believe the number one NBA uh, draft choice this coming year. A young man. This hair. No, no, I had this character to it. <laughs> and obviously I just died. Yeah. And what you're seeing now is uh, uh, my head now, since I cut my hair, yeah. is my real colors yeah. coming out. What's the and longest the, you've ever gone with your hair? Oh, I was a hippie. You know, I was a hippie back in the 60s, so I was, I was back down. I was down. Really? You know, I was down here. I was, I, was, I was really long. You know, I found out, I realized somebody, Jack Nicholson, accused me of it a long time ago. He says, yeah, Michael, you act with your hair. And I said, what are you talking about? Then I thought, oh, I know what he means. Like Wall Street, you know, go back. I did this picture called Falling Down. Yeah. Kind of a flat Ooh, top. Fantastic. Yeah. Black rain, you know, you kind of yeah. a, do a, a perm. So it is. Sometimes you find your character different ways. I sort of find my character through my hair. Through the hair. Yeah. It's yeah. all in the hair. But saying that, James, have mm. you ever, ever changed your hair? I have had this hair since I was 11. <laughs> you ever, never changed it. You ever do a Donald Trump thing? You ever, never you ever changed had, it. You know? Never changed it. Because, look, when it's working, it's working, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the truth of it. You know, like, you... you Guillermo, how long have you had this, uh, what I like to call the Del Toro? <laughs> because always, it's worth it. Always. I go, like, every six months, I go to a place 25 bucks. Yeah. And they get me looking like Mr. Pineapple in Sling Blade. <laughs> and then six months later, I have a long hair, I go back and r rinse and repeat, you know? Rinse and repeat? <laughs> but you are someone who has rituals in your life, and I want to talk to you yeah. about your Sunday ritual. Can you yes. explain to everybody what it is you do on a Sunday? Well, most of the time on Sundays, uh, I get together with other directors and we paint uh, model kits at my house. And we paint like miniature spacemen or monsters. And, uh, you know, uh, I remember, you know, this is what you do in Hollywood. You go and you're surrounded by models. Right. And in this case, it's model, model cars. Kids, yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> so Hans, so who's there? Who comes over? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, like I, the one that I know, one mind that I say is J.J. Abrams. Right. Because we've been friends for decades, and uh, we started uh, with the same teacher of makeup effects. We studied makeup effects with Dick Smith, who won the Academy Award for Amadeus. And we've been friends since then. We get the models together, we paint, we chat. I think oh. you're sniffing the glue. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 Actually, there's a, there's a, it's crazy glue, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've both been making movies for, for many, many years. Uh, Michael, can you remember the first film that you saw that had an impact on your life? Um, the one that comes to mind was a picture of my father called Lust for Life. Uh -huh. We played the artist Van Gogh. Mm. And mm. my brother, is about three years younger than I, he was about uh, seven. I think I was 10. And in this picture, my father played this famous painter who was renowned, who had a nervous breakdown and cuts his ear off. And it was one of the greatest performances my dad ever did. He got nominated for an Oscar. And I remember both Joel and I, we, we sort of lost the fact that it was dad up mm. on the screen and we're watching it. And he comes to the scene in the mirror and then he cuts his ear off. And my brother Joel goes, ah! And then daddy's brother turned his ear and he ran out of the theater. So I think that was one of the first ones that left a big impression. Great man. What about you, Gamma? What about you? You know, I, I think Pinocchio was and uh, Frankenstein. When right. I saw, when I, and they're the same story. Yes. The story of somebody that creates a child tosses out in the world this child and doesn't give a guidance to figure out the world. And I called them, between the two of them, is my biography. Right. My autobiography. Because when I saw Frankenstein, when Boris Karloff crosses the threshold, I went into, like, a, a paroxysm. I was like, like a, a religious moment for me. I said, that is the most beautiful, saintly, supernatural image I've ever seen. I mean, you are an Oscar-winning director, Guillermo, but I don't know if many people know this, that you really worked your way up yeah. through the entire film industry, yeah. working many, many jobs on sets Everything. and every kind of facet. What, what, what was the job that you did and what did you find the hardest in the <laughs> industry? Well, the weirdest was actually the first professional work uh, I did was, I was a PA. I would do everything, get coffee, and drive actors, whatever it was needed. I think it's important to do all those jobs before you direct. Because mm. you'll learn how to direct. But the one thing I didn't expect is one, one day they said, you have to go to this graveyard, bribe the caretaker, and dig a grave because we're shooting a scene sort of guerrilla style tomorrow. <laughs> so I went in and I bribed the guy and I said, I'm not going to dig, you dig. <laughs> so I, uh, uh, I ended up digging six feet down a, a grave. And my, my main concern is it was not really planned. So I was thinking, what if I find something? <laughs> <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm drinking, what am I going to do? Yeah. Am I going to all of a sudden have to dispose of Mr. or Mrs. whatever? Well, that already sounds like it could be one of your <laughs> movies. That's the beauty of it. Yes. Now, Michael, let's, let's talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp of Quantumania. Uh, I think it's going to be a huge success. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what's happening. Well, I don't know. This is, I'm always scared to talk about this because Marvel is so secret, you always feel like there's going to be a blowgun in the back yes, of the neck, yes. you know, coming yeah. through with the, with the information. But we're into the third one now. Yes. If you remember, the, 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 uh, the, um, on the second one, my wife, uh, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, we, we rescued her back from the quantum realm. And uh, now she's back. We've had a chance to kind of get to know each other after being missing for 30 years. Uh, and uh, so it's a nice family sense of getting together before an incredible mistake happens. And we find the whole group of us, uh, it's Paul Rudd, yes. uh, Ant-Man, Evangeline, Michelle and I, all down in a particularly unique environment. 